So here's the story of photographing a wedding all on film using seven different cameras and why I chose each of those for their particular task. My friend Annie Graham, who's an amazing wedding and elopement photographer, contacted me. One of her clients wanted someone to come out and shoot film. So the way it worked was a little bit different. I didn't show up and shoot as a second photographer or anything. We both sort of just shared things as primary photographers and she shot all digital, I shot all film, and I think the combined uh, look of everything was really, really interesting. So before we jump into all the cameras, if you are not a camera nerd like I am, I'm gonna show you all the photos, just show you what a wedding on film looks like, then we'll break down each camera individually, show the photos from it, and then you can kind of see how those all work together in context. Now, obviously, we have a crazy amount of uh, cameras here. I went through a ton of film, so I'm gonna go through each camera, why I used it, what I used it for, and show, obviously, the results. So, we'll start with this little guy. This is the Ektar H35. If you've seen uh, on my channel, I did a video on this, and it's oddly the best performing video I've ever made. This is a $50 reusable point and shoot camera. There are no settings other than turning the flash on and off. And it's a half frame camera, so you get twice as many photos per roll. And I use this primarily just for those janky, kind of low resolution, lo-fi kind of frames. A lot of the in-between stuff, I tried to just kind of keep this on me all day and shoot little bits here and there. Mostly I tried to use the flash and kind of just keep that lo-fi thing going going with this particular camera. And obviously you're not gonna get a crazy amount of resolution out of this or anything that's going to be amazing, but there's something about that low res kind of 
fuzzy nostalgia, especially on film, that is really interesting. And I think it kind of added to the whole collection, especially once you moved on to some of the medium format stuff. Now, the second point and shoot style camera that I had was the Fujifilm Class W. And you would think that this would just be like kind of another one of those lo-fi ish cameras, but the 28 millimeter lens on this thing is absolutely incredible. It's legitimately as good, if not better than some actual 28 millimeter lenses that I've used. So I actually use this in conjunction with my Leica M6. So I actually took more photos with this camera and the Leica than any of the other ones because I use these as my primary two cameras specifically. This camera also is not cheap, definitely. It's, you know, one of those thousand dollar point and shoots or whatever, but the quality that you get out of it is legitimately really, really amazing. And honestly, if I was doing more all film weddings, I definitely could rely on this a lot more. And after seeing the results, I actually feel really confident in making the right decision there. Now, the Leica M6, which is basically the internet's uh, most popular camera in terms of things that people lust after, the 50 millimeter on the Leica M6 specifically is the closest to medium format that I've gotten outside of actually using medium format in the overall look of things. The Sumalux is obviously just an incredible lens, and especially for a wedding, I feel like 50 millimeters works really, really well. So having this uh, amazing little combo to pair with the 28, honestly, I could have gotten away with doing the whole day on just those two cameras, but since I had the opportunity to use multiple formats and stuff, uh, obviously I wanted to go beyond just the 35 millimeter. Now, the two sort of auxiliary 35 millimeter cameras, this one is the Nikon F2. It was my dad's and uh, I've used it just a ton over the years. I used it with this 135 F3.5, mainly for ceremony stuff because I wanted to make sure that I wasn't gonna be getting in people's way as much and didn't really know exactly how the ceremony was gonna be set up and everything. And I'm really glad I had the extra reach on this and honestly manually focusing and doing things at 135 millimeters. It gave me the compression that I wanted and there's something about film that just brings out a little bit more than digital. I feel like my digital images at 3.5 on a 135 would look really sterile, but on film they looked really great and I was really, really excited to see the images out of this and was really happy with the results as well. And then to round out the uh, 35 millimeter stuff, I brought my EOS 3. I was planning on using it sort of as a backup with the 50 as well as this 24. And I really ended up using this just for some longer exposure stuff. I used a few rolls of Cinestill 800T on this specifically because I wanted to get some long exposures and some interesting stuff with that. But other than kind of tossing it on a tripod, I actually didn't really use much of it. And so it only really got one roll of use, but was obviously going to be really good as a backup. Now, going into the medium format stuff, if anybody knows anything about me and film, this is my Hasselblad 500CM. It was my uncle's and I got it, I feel like almost 10 years ago now. And it's definitely been my most used medium format camera. I love the square aspect ratio. I love just the experience of using the waist level finder. The 80 millimeter F 2.8 is just kind of like the perfect lens for this camera in my opinion. It gives a little bit of context while still giving you enough compression and things for the background to separate your subjects. And overall, it's just one of my favorite cameras, both in terms of the experience and in terms of the look. And I actually grabbed a few photos while manually focusing and moving backwards that I'm really, really proud of my ability to actually nail focus on those. And I think that people, when they think of film, one of the things they do think of is that kind of square format, that interesting depth. And that's what this camera has just always given me. And finally here, the only camera that actually isn't mine, uh, this camera belongs to my friend, Krista Marie Parker, who I need to give this back to her because I've had it for far too long, but it is the Pentax 6.7 along with the newer version of the 105 2.4. I mean, the look out of this thing is just unreal. If you want something that is going to give you amazing portraits, but also be able to back off a little bit and just get the most like, surreal looking full body portraits in a six, seven format. So you're getting 10 photos per roll, but honestly, the photos out of this thing are just incredible. When you use it, it almost looks like you're a kid with like a toy camera because it's so, so big. 
And then for all of these, I know the 6.7 has a meter, but my Hasselblad does not. And so I used my Seikonic L758DR, but I use this both for the spot meter and for the bulb. I definitely don't carry a meter around very often, but the times I do, it's incredibly nice to just be able to actually use the spot meter as well as the ambient meter to just know that you're getting what you're gonna get. Kinda just wanted to cover all my bases and make sure that I was doing things correctly and the amazing little Seikonic meter absolutely did that. Once I'd gotten all of the images developed locally, I actually scanned all of these with my negative supply whole kit. If you're interested, I did a video on scanning that you can see up here. I scanned all of them with the negative supply stuff and used the Sony a7 IV as well as the Sony 90 millimeter macro to get all of them uh, in a good consistent way. I then converted the negatives in Negative Lab Pro to the positive so I could actually see what they looked like. I reordered everything into chronological order and then was able to kind of start to work on color matching everything. So I guess my question now for you is, if you were getting married, would you want your photos to be taken on film? It's definitely a different process and your end result is going to be different. I ended up taking significantly less photos even though I took about 700 between all the different cameras. Typically in a wedding like this, I probably would have taken maybe 1500 or so. The output is definitely lower, but I feel like the end result is something that maybe is not for everybody, but for someone like me, I love shooting on film, I love seeing photos on film, and there's just that extra, I don't know, maybe five, 10, 15% on some of these images that you just don't get with digital. Digital has a lot to offer. Obviously, the majority of photos that I take nowadays are on digital, but there's just something special and magical about film that digital, I don't think ever will really be able to replicate. So thanks so much for watching. If you wanna see more videos like this that are less uh, gear-based specifically and more on just kind of like photography, the process and seeing more of the actual output, let me know in the comments down below. Subscribe if you aren't already and I'll see you all on the next one. No.